switch very similar hero grabs, whether it's the brew, whether it's the queen of plane, whether it's an axe, whether it's a bristle. They should have taken share. silencer here, man. They share silencer. <laughs> the uh, clock final pick is good, though, I think. Pretty yeah. elusive. Uh, big damage can just blow yep. up the wisp. That's yeah. the nice thing about the pure damage. You can just melt the wisp. Yeah. If you can <sighs> find the initiation, of course. I'm just curious now how they're how they're going to look to lane this. I mean, it seems pretty cut and dry for Moscow Five, unless they want to make an audible call. You know, your off lane bat, your support vengeful spirit, and then possibly a setup of a mid lane Tony Wisp with a support or not support, but a safe lane farming Slark. Uh, whereas secret. They have more options to kind of be flexible with their laning setup here as far as where they want to put the Queen of Pain, where they want to put this brew, and where they would like to end up placing this sniper. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see. We could even see some early movement specifically from the side of Moscow 5 to get that extra bit of intel as far as what the lanes are going to be and how Secret could look to adjust. I have to say here, Dakota, I think this M5 roster is a little scarier. Um... So you're gonna have that they're gonna have their work cut out for him here. So let's run through some rosters, see who's doing what. Radiant side, it will be Arteezy that takes the sniper. It looks like he'll be headed to the safe lane. Kuro on his signature Rubik. No surprise there. He rocking his own Rubik set. Yeah, of course. Of course. What a guy. That. Mm, beautiful. So we've got Zai on the Queen of Pain, and that puts S4 on the Brewmaster. Looks like offlane Quap mid brew, and that'll leave us with Puppy here on the Dazzle with his beautiful Dazzleator. Yep. Radiant side, the late replacements, Moscow 5, stepping in for the now disbanded Virtus Pro. And their roster here, we got Chomi, who put the team on his back last game on his double rapier sniper. Now going to be playing your tiny side by side with. You said Renator? Renator? Renator. Renator. Renator the Hater. He's going to be playing your Wisp, or the EO, if you will. Big him. He's going to be playing your Support Vengeful Spirit. That's going to go ahead and leave Batrider in the off lane on Afterlife, or Afterlife playing your Batrider, rather. And then, of course, to round things out, it's going to be ZXC playing your Core Slark in the safe lane. Yes, sir. So, looks like fairly straightforward lanes from Moscow 5. They don't do anything crazy. They do the standard Wisp Tiny Man. This will make things a little more difficult for Zai. They can harass with the toss. Even though he can blink away, Quap pretty squishy will be in uh, some trouble if she gets caught by the cup. You see him running out a couple of, uh, couple of branches there. Nice thing for Wisp is he was able to grab that early rune, so he gets straight to the bottle. The bottle's already on route. This little piggy is going to deliver it. The Emperor Pig. I don't know what the hell that is, but there's your bottle. <laughs> Thank you very much, and... Now your Wisp has the bottle to work with here, and we'll try to take control of these runes, and this is where things can get exciting real quick. He's already level 2, so both Tether and the Balls, as you can see, going to be zoning back Zai from this lane and allowing Tiny to get some early CS gains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mid lane going very well for Moscow 5. As a 2v1, you really would expect it to. They do switch it up. It seemed like Quap would be in the off lane, but now they put S4 down bottom with Puppy. Ends as a 2-1-2 for Secret. They want to make sure that S4 does find some decent farm. They'll be relying on his well-timed Blink Dagger to uh, do some work in the mid-game here. Starting to interrupt the pulls, Big Num. Not going to get all of the last hits he would like here. They'll share some XP. Yeah, S4 getting a fair bit out of this. So how's the off lane going? Or I guess the top lane, Bat Rider, not having a fun time. Getting zoned out hard by Kuro and Arteezy. He is securing himself some free farm. So Batrider will head back to the jungle. We see actually a dire ping on this hard camp here. Maybe a, a sign that they want to block it. Nope. I think just seeing the Batrider out of lane saying this is probably where the Batrider yeah, is. Yeah, more than likely he's going to go there. More than likely Wisp is going to be making stacks there. Originally those stacks would have been optimized for Tiny to farm up, but obviously they're probably going to have to send that over to Batrider as he is not going to be able to hold his own in the lane, getting zoned back pretty hard from Kuroki and allowing Arteezy to get free will in his sniper farm. So with that, Batrider needs to find farm somewhere, for God's sake. So he'll just forfeit to the jungle and at least get a bit of a head start there. And, uh, well, it's the nice thing going for Arteezy and Sniper is they have no threat whatsoever. But the threat could come. Moscow 5, once they're able to get that level 6 onto their wrist, the mid-game begins to become pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. ZXC has played a lot of Slark in his day. If I recall correctly, that was one of his signature heroes back in the days of Power Rangers. Uh, just something else that's coming to mind here that could bode well for Moscow 5. We'll see a little duel about the bottom rune. Renator gets the bottle up the bounty. Great news for the Wisp. And up top, 
Ricky and Invis picked up by Kuro. See what he's able to do with this. Maybe a rotation mid. If they could find a kill on the tiny, that would certainly be great. Though, might be a little ambitious. Looks like Kuro more interested in a potential courier snipe. But look at this courier movement here. Very wise from the Radiant side. They pull it into the what tree line. Smart piggy. It really is. Kuro actually almost finds it too. Instead, scouts out the Bat Rider and we'll just stand by and leech some XP to find his level 2. Yeah. Maybe hoping Bat Rider will take some free shots from these neutrals and he can take it back. But ha ha! My creep fool! Ha ha! Kuroki, see you later. <laughs> Instantly gets spam paint by the Bat Rider. He's like, guys, guys! There's a Rubik in our jungle. Help! Do something about it. What can we do? I don't know. Something. Even just his presence here. Very intimidating to Moscow 5. They will start to converge. Oh! Though. Is this a kill onto Kuro? It they could got be. it together. The can balls. They line this up. Telekinesis. Do the balls have the damage? Oh, God, trying to catch him with them. Oh, oh God. Oh, one more auto attack. There it is. First blood drawn by the Wisp. Renator gets it. And Kuro at first looked like a great play to try to bully out the Bat Rider. Ends up backfiring. Will cost him his life. Yep. Well Good played by M5, wood. though. Yeah. Avenge rotated all the way from the bottom lane and caught him. Wisp will take the extra bonus bounty. Get the extra XP to get started towards that level 6. Good for him. Bottom lane, a little bit of harassment on Tier Slark, but he's able to hold his position. You know, very elusive hero in his own right, so should be able to stay close enough to kind of get into the levels. He's level 4 right now at 3 minutes and 30 seconds in. Not too shabby, would obviously love to have more CS. Only 6 and 1 on your Slark, who's supposed to be farming it up. It's pretty rough, because on the other side of the, of the map, you're going to see Arteezy at 23 and 10 on his sniper. He's going to have a good early boom. Yeah, exactly. That is the, the big thing going in favor of Secret right now. S4 is also farming very nicely against the Slark. The presence of Puppy has really helped him out. ZXC really feeling the hurt of this uh, dual off lane. Just boots Stout Shield. He may still be able to recover. I'll be curious to see what build Arteezy goes for. Maybe he'll pick up a Midas. It's something Arteezy likes to do when he gets this kind of free farm early on with a lot of space in lane. Could be a good option for him, though. It could also extend this window where Tiny can just combo him down. CXC down bottom, initiated on again, but he'll survive. Yeah, things can get a bit scary here. S definitely the second Chomi reaches level 5. Then the nuke power wow. becomes pretty big. That together with the spirits. Secret are way out farming them, though. Look at this. It's 1,500 uh, net worth and experience in favor of the Dire. And they're down a kill. So that just speaks to how well they're farming in these lanes. Yeah. All three of their cores doing quite nicely, actually. I think that's more on... How well the sniper is definitely doing top, and plus their bottom lane is doing very, very well finding the farm. Well, compare the off laners here. You've got Brewmaster versus Bat. Bat's got seven last hits. Uh, Brew has 26. Yeah. If you look at the safe lane farmers, can you even compare? I mean, maybe you look at Tiny compared to the sniper, in which case the sniper's still winning. Then you've got ZXC, who's got as many CS as Puppy does right now. So, yeah, M5 are losing these lanes pretty hard, actually, even though they got that first blood. They're definitely going to have to wait a bit. Slark is just going to have to put his farm game on hold until this Wisp and Tiny can maybe consider going on some gank missions, and then he can look to find his own way. But priority part, which you can't really blame him for. This dynamic duo has brought together a lot of wins for a lot of teams and definitely warrants a lot of the first bans, but... They're looking to see if they can make it happen here. Tiny's already got his power treads. We'll see what build he opts for. Usually, like, power tread drum ags is your pretty standard build. You could just go straight for the ags, but usually you want the drums just for that extra little buffer in your mana pool so you can combo a little bit easier. And You have plenty of regen, but at this point, it's really just an issue of max mana for Tiny more than anything else. Yeah, nice little pull to the high ground, but Vengeful Spirit's going to just TP thereafter, and there's no way they're going to stop him. Yeah, nice heads-up play from Big Nom. Meanwhile, at the bottom... There will be a little skirmish over the bounty rune. Dazzle will pick it up, pushes back Renator. Quap comes in, actually oh, looks for a potential kill, but... She has Sonic! Okay, aggressive blink forward, looks for the Sonic onto two, gets the kill on Wisp. Shallow Grave keeps Zai alive, and the haste rune will further secure his retreat. Oof. Nicely played. Yeah, good call out there. I don't know if it was from Puppy or Zai, but they make the committed jump after being scout out, scouted out from Puppy. And once he lines up the shot, he gets it there. So mm -hmm. good work from Zai. Gets the kill. Certainly helps out his one versus two matchup in the mid lane. And top lane, Arteezy still has a free lane to work with and is about to have a free tier one tower. Avenge will come in. Maybe hope for a deny here. This should be easy pickings for Arteezy. Nope. No, it's not. It still is killed oh, by the Dyer. So that no looked deny. like a deny. I that, was, was that was a photo finish of a deny. Yeah. But uh, still doesn't go to Arteezy, so I suppose a minor victory there for M5 despite losing that early tower. 
Eek. The net worth chart is scary. Bottle Lots abuse. Of red. Bottle abuse. Someone report him. Mid lane. Puppy's going to pick up the bottle, refill it for Zai, and hand it back. Sharing is caring. Nope. Didn't hit him back quick enough. Lost one charge. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Come on. <laughs> All right. So Tiny really the saving grace for M5 right now. And as I say that, he gets initiated on, takes a huge amount of damage. The tether's there from Renator. He'll heal him up. But tough for Chomi right now. Still not really at that window where he can make the big plays. Their other lanes are just suffering so much. Slark, he is 9 out of 10 on overall net worth. He has 9 CS right now. He can't even get close to the creep wave because S4 is there ready to blast him with a thunderclap. Top lane, big numb. This is a kill, I think. Yes, it is. Arteezy gets a solo onto the bench. Arteezy is getting so much freaking farm. It's going to be a bit of a problem here. For Moscow 5, but bottom lane engagement, stun toss combo into S4, pulls out the split. Now he's got to get the hell out of there and split himself. But Chomi, not going to go too far. Oh, Cyclone's going to catch him here, and there. poor little Wisp does not have level 6 to try to relocate him out. They get a nice grab onto the Tiny and take him down. Yeah, first primal split comes out of S4, yields a kill, and also on that high value target. Now all of a sudden, Secret way in the lead. Nearly 6,000 net worth, 3,000 experience. This is the team secret we're more accustomed to seeing here with a very early lead dominating these lanes and this big game will be very difficult for Moscow 5. Though, Batrider is close to his blink. That is one thing they have going their way aside from Tiny's mediocre farm. And the unfortunate thing is because he has a bit of mediocre farm because normally you wouldn't have to be having an off laner forfeit and take over the jungle. This would be where Wisp stacks up these camps and then they quickly do it together. And the You're next right. thing you know, Wisp gets his level six and Tiny gets a component or two towards his Agnum Scepter, but they can't do that at all. They have to leave it for Bat to get his Blink Dagger. Yeah, and then they hope that that's going to be enough. That's a really good point, honestly. That's where a lot of that fallback farm for Tiny comes from. If you can go take get like a thousand gold or so from a three, four stack in the jungle, that makes such a big difference here at the 10 minute mark. So. Maybe not the most uh, efficient setup with their, their hero choices, but this set of kills will get Afterlife, his Blink Dagger, level 6 on the bat as well. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, okay, ZXC is just fine. Just taking some damage. They still have just not contested this sniper. Look at this, Arteezy goes first item Blink Dagger on the sniper. So no Midas, no Sanj and Yasha. Yeah, no Morbid Mask. They're just going Blinks here. Yeah, no Mask of Madness, like you said. S4, he gets his Blink also. Yeah. So just as Bat is ready to find some initiation, Secret has the tools to try and counter-initiate. Yeah, that's good. I mean, snipers are going to be more elusive. There's the debut of the Blink onto the mid lane, though. They get a hold of Puppy. Well, down he goes. And they kill the Puppy. Yeah, that's an easy pickup. Nothing the Dazzle can do there. Locked in place from full to zero. No chance for a grave. That's going to happen. But Blink Dagger, reveal, a kill on a Dazzle. That's not too bad for Secret. Of all the heroes to go down, I think Puppy is pretty high on their list of sacrificial lands. I just, there's a point where I feel like Arteezy's got to be like, am I really just going to have this lane and just kind of do my own thing the whole time? This reminds me a little bit of the game two from yesterday against Dooza when Zai was like, are you guys do whatever you want. I'm just going to free farm for the first 15 yeah. minutes. That's kind of what Arteezy's doing here where it's four <laughs> versus five with just a farming sniper. Yeah, and it, it works so well for him as a gyrocopter with a silly build. It's it. I imagine it's going to work even better as a sniper who's going more of a standard. I mean, maybe not too standard getting the early blink, but yeah, this hero we already saw last game how he can do serious work with a serious amount of farm. And Arteezy's looking to show Moscow 5 like, hey, well, now I'm a sniper player. I'll show you how we can do it. Bottom and lane, Puppy. Does he get initiated on here? ZXC connects with the pounce, but he's taking tower shots. Not really ideal. He goes into Dark Pack, but S4 thunderclaps the ground. He's dead. Back towards the mid lane. Big Numb taking a lot of damage. Ooh. Zai in very deep. No blink. Looks like he got lassoed in, but he does and at least denied. get a kill before he dies as Tiny denies the tower. So one for two around the map. Was a nice kill on Slark, though I did miss some of the action in the mid lane. This Whiff needs to get level six. It's about to be minute 12, and he's still level five. That relocate could have been a game changer for maybe a couple of these last skirmishes, whether it's going from one lane to the other, they make the jump on the Chomi here. Clap, get the hell out of here as he tosses back the brew, but they toss him right back in, and now it's S4 who gets the drop. What a play from Kuro. Steals the toss, oh gives my it God. right back to him. It's hot potato on S4. <laughs> That was wonderful. That is. Those are the kind of plays that you expect out of the Kuro Rubik. He is yeah. just on point. Always thinking a step ahead. You know that when you play a hero a lot and you're just used to kind of matchups like this and you see stuff like that happen, you're just quick to react. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even take the second to think about it. Gets the mm -hmm. toss steal, tosses him right back in. It's free blink dagger. 
Makes it work. But, hey, Wisp is able to throw together level 6 now. We'll see if uh, using this relocate could be something to turn things right back on the head of Secret. But Secret already have built together quite the bit of farm. And here's our first relocate of the game. Zayori going to mid lane now. They get the toss combo onto Puppy. He Puppy gets off the grave. Gets He's the grave okay. off. His team is nearby. Can they try to turn this around? Puppy still falls. They're starting to converge, but they can't get here fast enough. In Ooh. comes S4. Clap on three. There's your split. Relocate out, but he sees Big Num. Isolates the Venge, and he'll do some work here. Meanwhile, off to the side, Afterlife goes down as he tries to TP home. And they're just going to continue on here. Kuro taking some damage in the front lines, but now the fight's broken out. Shomi goes down without a Wisp to save him. Assassinate. That's the end of ZXC. This is about to be a five-hero one. Yep. For just the dazzle. They may have found the relocation, Dakota, but it's gonna cost them their Whee! entire team as RTZ gets an old Oh my kill. god. Okay, well, Team Secret showing it how it's done as a sniper here in game number two. Game number one went pretty long, but this one's looking like Secret are gonna consider game one a fluke, and they wanna just decimate Moscow 5 here. Yep. After Four fight, RTZ to 11. grabs his nether regions and yells, Relocate this! As they take a very successful team fight. Now, how do you deal with the sniper at this point? 8k net worth compared to the nearly five of Tiny. If this keeps up, RTZ is just going to be unstoppable. He's now got the Yasha. Farming tools coming about, but forget about farming creeps, man. He's just farming heroes. Yeah. Six, zero, and one. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Once he gets that Mask of Madness, if that's what he decides to do first, he could just go straight for a Sage and Yasha. I mean, it's not too bad. Getting up that extra bit of health will help you with... If, you, if they are able to get a hold of him with a relocate or some way, the combo could still one-shot him. I but think Sanjay Nash is like same, perfect in yeah. a game like this. 14 minutes in, you've got a huge lead. You want to be combative, keep taking objectives, bring the fight to them. SNY is perfect for that. Puppy again relocated on. He knows it's coming. Preemptively graves. Show me hits him with a stun, but the combo's not there. Puppy, he may die again, but we remember how it happened last time. Wisp gets assassinated. Show me gets left behind. Venge will finish off the dazzle with a scream. But, okay, he TPs home. Still a one for two. Tiny's dead for just a dazzle. Afterlife tries to make it to the high ground. A scream. Oh, they could have killed him, but didn't have the vision for it. S4 with his signature haste rune. They, they should just stop there, using yeah. relocate at this point, I think, is really what the, the game plan yeah, should be. This, this is... We're two for two with a relocate that has turned into a pretty bad exchange. And Tiny went with a blink dagger. That feels weird to me. Or a tiny wisp. I, if, it, if it was a solo a la carte tiny game, then I understand you need that bit of mobility. Mm -hmm. But in these kind of games, if you're playing with a tiny wisp, maybe at far at most you go for a drums to help with your mobility a bit. But you got to go right for the Agnum Scepter. That's yeah. where your bread and butter is. That's where you can bring in the accelerated farm, and that's where you can take the towers pretty damn fast. Especially when you have a Slark on your team who's so under farmed, you need to be that big bad carry. If you're not the one in the front lines punching people, there's nobody in the front lines punching people. And without an Agonims, it just doesn't work that well. I, mean, I totally agree with you, my friend. Now uh -oh. they will smoke up. They uh -oh. find Show Me Prime. Primal split. Good swap from Big Num, but it'll probably cost him his life as we go back to PowerPoint Dota. Here it goes, your assassinate. Down goes the Venge. Renator. He does have a relocate that's just cooled down, but will it make a difference? Nice tether across the ravine to the Bat Rider. That's a nice play. He's got Toss stolen again, so get ready for Kuroki to be the blink dagger for someone. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, relocate up and above. They there. want to make the go in. S4 gets the slap, takes down the Wisp. Afterlife trying to fly away. Kuroki's going to get vision. He's going to toss someone onto him. Could be Zai here. Nope, Zai's going to blink on forward, and they'll get the kill anyways. Yeah, they're just falling apart. 16 to 5. It's secret that are just steamrolling over Moscow 5 now. Nearly a 12,000 gold lead, somewhere about 10,000 experience. Fight after fight, this sniper having a flawless game. Just maxing out that net worth chart, and... Well, what's he have coming? Something on the courier. That's your Sanji Nyasha. Smart choice. Radiance middle tower so fallen. smart. Mm -hmm. I'll move back up and above. 9-0 and o now on this sniper for RTZ. Yeah. He's just, I mean, he's just had un, unlimited space this game. He free farmed yeah. the first 10 minutes, then joined his team, and they've just been pretty much five manning since then, where he's picked up the majority of the kills. Nine yeah. out of the 16 kills they've grabbed have come from RTZ himself. Yeah, I mean, this is the games you dream of playing as a sniper so. in a pub. They really hate this Dazzle. He almost lasted Ooh. the Dazzle there. Chomi blinks forward. Doesn't get the combo off. S4, oh, or pardon me, Zai is there. Too late the to Orchid. relocate. He dies anyways. It's oh my god. Just, they melt. Big Numb survives for now. Lasso onto oh. Arteezy. 
But where's the follow-up damage? There's ZXC none. says, I want to fight, but I've got to run. Venge ties to the Sonic Wave on the back end. ZXC dies to the Sniper. Oh, ho, ha, ha. And that's it. Another five for nil trade. Oh, 17 oh. minutes. Secret Rackham. In game number two, it looks nothing like it. Sniper. What a hero. Well, Sniper's two for two this series. That's for sure. Yep. Oh. Okay. So, Sniper banned this next game. Nope. Did they just somebody pick him up? No, it will be first pick. It will be... Well, this is what happened. It's, it's going to be first pick, I imagine, to Moscow 5. But the both...